We're in for a treat tonight because we're going to go into Blue Feathers Wilderness. You get to go out there. How, how'd you like to be sitting right there now? You've been out for two weeks already and you got about another three, four weeks to go, man. And you're out there by yourself. This is one of the headwater lakes of the Yukon River, uh, Tagish, Tagish Lake. The canoe is an elegant and practical way to venture into what I like to call the deep wilderness. That's way back there where nobody goes. Nobody. I very seldom ever see anybody when I'm on my month solo trips. Go way back in, the, in there. And this is a typical camp. This is on Atlan Lake, British Columbia. Uh, actually an 85 mile wilderness gem, a world class wilderness. And to be out there for a month is, uh, I can only say it's cosmic. You're one on one with creator. There's no middleman. It's just you and the boss. Sitting there like this, uh, this one night, two loons flew by, and I was grateful. And uh, amazingly, a few minutes later, I can hear them land on the other side of the lake. And yeah, now that's called quiet. It's a pretty wild climb here. <clears throat> so I spent 10 days at a Forest Service cabin in. Yokobi Island and uh, came out into a seething Gulf of Alaska, probably the most dangerous, and uh, I said a lot of Hail Marys before I got out of there. While I was out paddling on a month and a half solo trip into Glacier Bay, Alaska, I ran into this group of seven kayakers from Alaska Discovery, and uh, upon their invitation, I paddled with them for two weeks. That was a great experience, and I got some great shots. This is my teepee on the outer coast of Glacier Bay, Alaska, Dixon Harbor. I spent a month there. Many bears, I saw nine bears and seven wolves. And this is the outer coast where one of the wildest untrammeled places on the planet. The teepee is also a very elegant and practical way to spend time in the wilderness. It's, uh, I believe it, the cone shaped has something to do with it, but it's like sleeping in a battery charger. It's the way I feel like uh, every night that I'm in a teepee. In fact, I slept in my teepee last night in Cokedale. The Buckskin Internationals in Wyoming, there was over 600 teepees and emulating the period from 1825 to 1840. And everybody was in buckskins, and I wasn't even supposed to take this shot, but I think I'm past the statute of limitations. <laughs> Some of my wild friends, the goats are definitely the kings of the mountains. They spend the winters up there in the wild country, and they don't come down like the snowbirds do. These guys are absolutely tough, and uh, if you could be like one of those, you'd be something. Every photographer's dream is to get within 40 feet of a wild wolf. And uh, this unsuspecting fellow, for a minute or two there, I got given away there by a flock of ravens, and he would have stayed longer. This magnificent bull ram up in uh, Yellowstone, you very seldom see a full curl because the vision usually affects it and so they broom them off. That's, but this is a magnificent full curl. It's a big old bad grizzly bear walking along the peaceful Lamar River. And just moments before that, he walked from the bank down to the river and about 40 feet from, but from here to there from me, and I thought he was coming across, and boy, I got into my Hail Marys again, but anyway, he went up the river ways. This is an unusual shot because you don't get to see great horned owls in the wilderness for, in the daytime very much, and this obliging fella was so uh, obliging, he let me get in there for this great shot. A good intro shot for uh, few mountaineering pictures here. It's when I was a little bit stronger and younger and certainly cuter. <laughs> but.
I was leading a climb up the, uh, the vertical face here of uh, north face of Buck Mountain in uh, Washington Cascades. And I turned around and I said, Jim, wow, what a great shot. So, man, he just hung on there, man, while I pumped in my camera. And uh, <laughs> anyway, here's Jim and I up on top of Mount Adams now, the second highest peak in Washington, 12306, with uh, beautiful Mount St. Helens before it got a little bit nervous there in 1980. The, one of the wildest climbs ever, ever on, the West Ridge of Forbidden. And if you look across, you'll see that beautiful mountain over there, El Dorado. And this next shot is going to be on the Summit Ridge, which we climbed two weeks earlier. 8,868 feet. And, uh, yeah. My buddy got a little bit nervous there, Doug, you know, when I was photographing and he jerked a couple of times and he said, hey, what's going on? I said, don't worry, Doug, if you fall off one side, I'll jump off the other. <laughs> yeah, it did seem to make him very happy. Well, here we are back down again at the peaceful Tagish Lake in the Yukon. And my only regret is that I only had 20 slides instead of my usual 200. Uh, I hope you got a little bit of taste of Blue Feathers Wilderness. <laughs> 